So, um, where did Cecil start? Which point? At which point? Of the Cecil start. And why, how did they start? Good. Now, upon graduating from UST School of Mines, okay. after my national service, I was trying to get myself employed. I was looking for employment opportunities. I sent applications across most of the automobile companies um, in, in Accra, um, hoping that I could get an opportunity to work within my space. But unfortunately, none of that worked. All right. And so having realized my capability in education and with such an experience of not getting a job, I decided to run myself into research to find out what exclusively can I do within the automobile industry that can become a career path for me to channel. Right. So my research got me to discover the detailing concept that in maintenance of cars, it is not limited to the mechanical maintenance alone, but it got to do with the interior and exterior maintenance of cars. Then in 2000, that concept was not in any commercial form in Ghana. All right. All right. So I decided to pick that concept up and develop it. And trust you me, it was quite a challenge because you are developing a new concept in a new environment where people don't really understand the concept too well. And so to buy into the concept was quite a challenge. But having done the research and realized that this was a viable business to do, I did not give up. I pursued it and kept working around it. There are some moments when I sent proposal to some corporate organizations and I was heavily de um, demoralized because they made me feel that it didn't mean anything much to them. And they've been washing cars with Omo and with using kerosene and shining the paint where what was it that i was talking about different products and chemicals that they can use to maintain their cars i really got demoralized at a point it was like giving up but believing in a concept and believing in my dream was one strong thing i had and so i never gave up so it went on until one organization bought into the idea that was that carl bank okay all right so Carl Bank bought into the idea and I did not have money to actually rent a space to even work. So I developed the concept of mobile car detailing where I come to your office or your home to come and detail your car for you. Right. So what I'll do is to have to pick a car to your premises. How old were you around this? Um, I was around 26. Oh. Yeah, 26, 27. Yes, there are about those times. Yeah, okay. you know, so I had to come to your premise and get that done. And so when I spoke to Carl Bank, Carl Bank bought into the idea and said, well, we can give you a space within our work premises, but your operations will be limited to our staff vehicle and our, um, our business vehicles. That okay. means their corporate vehicles. All right. Okay. I saw it that it was going to limit my ability to meet the needs of a lot of more clients. But then because the concept was also unique, you need a certain caliber of people to understand it and want to make use of it. So you are looking mainly at the middle and upper class, okay, who have probably been well educated and have a bit of knowledge about these things and they will really patronize your product. And so since I found myself in the midst of such persons, I felt that they would also be a source of marketing the product for me. So I will accept that offer and stay within their midst. And at least when they see the quality of work I do, they will begin to spread the message among their peers. Right. And that will become a stepping stone for me to reach out to much persons in society. So I accepted the offer and I was working on their company vehicles and their personal vehicles for a while. Then it got to a stage where I sent a proposal to SNIT. SNIT bought the idea and decided that they were going to let their top executive vehicles be detailed periodically. However, they don't have a space that I can come and do the work there. Mm. 
if only I have my own space, they will be able to bring their top executive's vehicle oh, for detailing. Yeah. And that really threw a big challenge to me. And so I started looking for a space. And fortunately, I got a space in someone's house. In fact, gated house. All right. But then I took the challenge to take, take that space up, rented it. And so I had to now move my camp from Carl Merchant Bank to that space at Osu Nyaniba Estates. Was it big enough to... It could take just one car at a time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I didn't have the resources to be able to get a bigger space. So I had to do with what I have. It could take one car at a time. And because I wanted to reach out more and I've got another corporate organization recognizing the quality of service I'm delivering, I decided to take it up. Okay, okay to challenge myself. And trust you me, when I did, I got Carl Bank staff vehicles and company vehicles moving to, your place. moving to my place to still use my service where I went, in addition to SNAP. All right. So having such caliber of people bringing their vehicles to my end was beginning to create a scene of what kind of services is this. People come around to see what we were doing. Messages started going out here and there. And before I could realize, I couldn't handle vehicles that were coming. Wow. Yes. And that was how it started. I see. Yes. So, um, when did you get a place of your own? You start a, a, a major one. Yeah. Now, when it started in that vein, along the line, I got some opportunities at some filling stations who were ready to give me space to operate. One of the places was the Goyle filling station at 37. Okay. Yes. The man was such a great man. Mr. Nketiah. Okay. I mean, he was such a marvelous one. That was during Kufuor's era. He was okay. one of the special aides to President Kufuor, ex-President oh, okay. Kufuor. Okay. okay. Uh, what happened was I got in touch with him when I was invited to come detail the president's vehicle, ex-president Kufo's vehicle at the castle at a point. So you got to detail President Kufo's car while you were still at your one one car, car one or, shop. <laughs> oh amazing! <laughs> yes. Because in fact the quality of service was that good because we did wow. not want to compromise on quality. Because I wanted to build a brand based on quality, not yeah. based on numbers, all right? So there was a gentleman who came from the US who was coming to detail ex-president President Kufour's vehicle. Okay. And apparently he needed a team to support him do that. Okay. And so someone recommended us to him. So I was actually in the office when he walked in and told me that he, I was recommended to him yeah. Um, to use my services in helping detail the president's vehicle, then President Kufu. All right, so wow. it was an exciting moment for me. Wow. I was like, wow, so car detailing is taking me to castle. And that was my first time I had to visit the castle. What was your staff strength then? My staff strength then was about five. Okay. I had wow. about a team of five that I was working with. You know, and so that day, I it was like I didn't even care if I should close that place down, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and go and detail the president's car because that was going to be a huge yeah. leverage for me, you know. And so we went and we got an excellent work done that pleased this man, Mr. Inketia, the special aide to the president. And so it was after about two years later, I was refueling at a station, which is the Goal filling station at 37. And then a man beckoned to me. I was wondering who he was. Honestly, I didn't take good notice of him when we were working on the president's vehicle at the castle. So when I went to him, he was like, whoa, gentlemen, I've been looking for you all this while. The job you did on the president's car was excellent. And trust you me, I want to give you a space within my filling station to be detailing cars. He just held my hand and walked me to a space and said, look, set up here and be detailing cars. 
then I kind of like, so how much am I going to pay? He said, I'm not going to charge you. Whatever you make and whatever percentage you want to give me, do it. Amazing. Yes. You know, so that led me to open a branch at the Goyle filling station at Tech 7, which led to one thing to the other. And eventually, I had Glory Oil filling station on the Spinkers Road, currently oh, where we are now. So Glory Oil was my third station. All right. So it also went on and on. And this was beginning to be very interesting. I was really getting some good turnovers here and my staff strength also started growing. So at a point I had about almost 40 workers because at each branch you have about 10, 10, some of them 15 where the pressure is mounting, you know, and Glory Oil alone had about almost 20 workers at a point in time when I started, you know. So the business started growing um, until I had about five branches. Okay. In Accra. In Accra. So in the pace of eight years, I had opened about five branches. Wow. Yes. In the pace of eight years, I had opened about five branches. But then the worst happened when I met one of uh, a business person whose space I was to use to open my fifth branch. Okay. Now, what happened was... I will recommend you subscribe to this channel. This is a channel that seeks to provide you with enough information on entrepreneurship, technical vocational education and training, and ICT. These are sets of information when well harnessed and made judicious use of can help build on your human capital in the job market. It can as well get you well informed to set yourself up as an entrepreneur and build a big business out of this. This will help you walk yourself away from unemployment and together we will be able to contribute to reduce the unemployment rate we have in our country.